see you to tell us about the you know, pro-finite properties of uh, hyperbolic three manifolds. And uh, um, so um, one of the main um, topics of this uh, workshop uh, is about pro-finite completions of um, three manifold groups. Um, and uh, I guess uh, since people, there are many experts here, um, and uh, I'm just gonna um, briefly recall what uh, this means. Um, basically, whenever you have a, um, uh, a, a group, a, a countable group, uh, then uh, you can try to form the um, so-called profile and completion of it. That's gonna be um, the inverse limits um, uh, of, uh, uh, as you, are run over all the finite index subgroup of this given group, and then you take all the finite quotients, take the inverse limits, um, and then you will get uh, what is called the profinite completion. Um, and uh, this is, uh, uh, mm, a, 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 if you think about uh, what happened to three main the topology uh, over the past one or two decades, and then people were, um, trying to construct uh, finite covers of those uh, manifolds. And uh, there was a period, uh, I guess I actually uh, attended a workshop also in Montreal in, in 2006 or 2012, um, something like that. And uh, at that time, Danny Weiss uh, gave a, uh, a, a lecture about profile, uh, about this, uh, um, virtual specialization of um, uh, final volume hyperbolic groups. Um, and then um, there was uh, this uh, confirmation of um, uh, virtual Huffman conjecture and uh, virtual um, fibrin conjecture. And since then, people have um, been um, knowing that uh, many of, uh, I mean, there, there are many ways, many new ways to construct final volume, uh, fi final covers of um, three manifolds, not only. Um, hyperbolic manifolds, but also other um, other ones with uh, um, non-geometric decomposition. Um, and the, um, then, um, then one of the directions was to ask, okay, what if you uh, look at all the uh, final quotients of the three manifold group, uh, or uh, um, in, put in another way, uh, what if you look at all the finite covers and the deck transformations, what can you uh, read off now uh, from that group and uh, on this question, I mean, this is a general question, but um, turns out um, it, it's um, it's quite um, deeply um, related to uh, some of known um, theories in the three manifolds. Basically, uh, we have a lot of classical uh, three manifold topology, and uh, if you and um, look at those today, then um, roughly speaking, you, 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 you can, it makes sense to ask, uh, okay, what are those uh, classical uh, invariants that are, uh, that, that, that depends only on the profile completion that are called profile properties? Uh, and uh, uh, what are those um, that uh, requires more information about the actual topology? So, um, so roughly speaking, um, what is interesting here um, is a uh, our sentences like this. Um, well, when you talk about um, profile and completions of groups, um, typically you will um, restrict yourself to certain class of groups. Sometimes you restrict to uh, residual finite, finitely generated groups, and sometimes um, if you restrict to the class of three manifold groups, then um, then you um, sometimes can get um, some more results. So among a certain class of groups, um, then a um, certain kind of property um, uh, is or uh, is not um, uh, a profinite property. And these um, theorems of this type um, will be um, interesting um, for several reasons, uh, uh, as I will um, explain um, in some um, examples. Um, and uh, um, 
since I'm gonna talk mostly about the finite volume hyperbolic manifolds, so it is interesting to ask, uh, what are those uh, uh, prof uh, are are those classical invariants for hyperbolic manifolds uh, are profinite properties, and um, and among them, what we have in mind are some um, you know finite volume hyperbolic theorem have uh, most rigidity, so so its hyperbolic geometry is totally um, determined um, by its uh, mm, mm, fundamental group, mm, and then um, um, so these uh, there are some uh, very interesting um, properties uh, that has been uh, studied a lot uh, in the history. Um, among those, there are like uh, for hyperbolic manifolds, finite volume hyperbolic three manifolds. I'm gonna restrict um, myself to like the class of um, three manifold groups. And um, then for those hyperbolic ones, um, uh, we're interested in, um, for example, uh, the hyperbolic volume, um, whether uh, they are um, profiling property. And uh, um, there are some more um, invariants and there are so-called the invariant uh, trace field, and uh, there are so-called the um, invariant on um, quaternion algebra. Hmm. And because these two are um, are typically uh, algebraic structures, so we're interested in whether their isomorphism type are determined by uh, the the profile competition of the fundamental group. And also, um, there is uh, it's, uh, for three main, hyperbolic three manifolds, there are arithmetic ones, and there are non arithmetic ones. So um, we're interested in whether arithmeticity uh, are profanating uh, properties. Okay. Um, and actually, you can add some more um, things that are interesting. For example, the Chen Simon invariants and uh, uh, and uh, probably some quantum invariants. But um, um, but I guess I'll restrict myself to this set of um, properties because uh, uh, that's what uh, I can say something about. Um, and uh, um, okay, before that, uh, I should recall some. Um, Mm, some known facts. Um, so um, that's uh, at least among um, among three manifold groups, among finitely generated uh, three manifold groups, which can be realized uh, as a fundamental group of compact three manifold. Um, and uh, now it is known that, uh, first of all, the, uh, the being Mm. Mm. Uh, finite volume hyperbolic. That is, uh, uh, this is known to be a, a profinite property. And so if you have two such groups, one of them is a uh, um, finite volume hyperbolic three manifold, and uh, you know there is a profinite isomorphism um, between uh, the two fundamental groups. Then the other one must also be a final, uh, final or hyperbolic three manifold, and this is uh, this is a result due to um, Wilton and Zalewski. Mm. And actually, they um, proved some more general results. They, they actually showed that um, the geometric decomposition um, is de determined by the profile completion. So once you know the profile completion of fundamental group, then yeah, uh, then you know um, what the uh, geometric decomposition graph or the JSG decomposition graph looks like, and you can um, yeah, you can figure out um, uh, which vertices should be cipher fiber ones and which should be um, um, the hyperbolic ones, except that you don't know. Um, the corresponding vertices have I, uh, whether they have isomorphic uh, fundamental groups. Um, that, that means uh, the, the pattern of the geometric decomposition is uh, 
um, as a profile and property. And also, uh, actually, the uh, you, you can tell whether um, the manifold is uh, uh, orientable. Yes. Uh, this is kind of uh, more um, uh, for close ones. This is more uh, obvious, and uh, for uh, for non closed uh, I mean, for cast ones, I think it also also follows from the result of world and the last because they they can actually match up all the uh, JSJ tori. So so in that sense, you can or cast um, subgroups. So in that sense, you can tell if it's uh, orientable or not. Mm, and uh, um, yeah, um, typically I think we um, talk about um, talk about invariant trace fields. Um, if you want to talk about these old things, then you typically assume the manifold is uh, orientable mm, to do that. Mm, yeah. So these are um, this these two facts um, tells us that um, the questions on the right hand side. Uh, makes sense. You can mm, uh, you, you can ask whether those things are profinite properties. Mm. And uh, mm, uh, yeah, um, yeah. In, in this talk, um, I, I guess I, I I won't be able to show that uh, these set of properties are definitely profinite properties. But actually, um, I, 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 I'll state a. Uh, uh, main theorem, which tells you that if you assume certain um, number theoretic um, conjecture, um, then you can you you can tell that these are all provenant properties. That's um, that's one of the goals that I'm gonna um, I wanted to do in this talk. Um, and uh, before that, I think I want wanted to mention some uh, motivation for considering this collection uh, of. Uh, Mm, uh, of properties, uh, one of them was actually on. Um, some motivations. So I guess one of the motivation is related to the so-called um, homological uh, torsion growth conjecture. Mm. And there are several, um, I, I mean, many authors uh, uh, mentioned this conjecture. One of them is, uh, uh, one of those is uh, Berger and Vinkatesh. And um, they had a paper uh, clearly stating this uh, conjecture um, in the context of a uh, uh, hyperbolic main, manifold. So, so for three dimensional hyperbolic, um, that's M3, the finite volume uh, or you can assume it's uh, uh, closed. Um, then what the conjecture says is that if you look at um, uh, uh, a sequence of finite covers, let's say M and then um, maybe M1, M2, power of uh, finite covers such that um, such that you you want the fundamental group to convert to the um, I guess they assume that these are regular covers and uh, and they assumed that uh, um, pi one of m i intersection of pi one or pi one of m i is uh, identity that is uh, called the co-final condition. And uh, they also assumed, they, they actually assumed, or in, in certain further discussion, they uh, assumed this uh, manifold to be arithmetic. Uh, and then the conjecture basically says that on the limits of, uh, you, you look at all the, um, you, you look at the um, number of um, torsion elements in the finite cover um, the, with integral coefficients. And then you take the 
log divided by the uh, covering degree of m over m and the cat limit the conjecture limits um, is actually the uh the the uh, l2 um portion of the main code which turned out to be the um, volume of uh, m divided by uh six six pi so this was a uh this is a conjecture and i think right now this conjecture is uh widely open what is known is that on um, the right hand side is actually an upper bound and um, there is uh, less than or equal to and it takes the left hand to be limited soup and um, running over all the possible sequences or towers of covers like this and um, and uh, um, for some reason um, uh, I, I think the um, i mean being regular is uh, kind of uh, necessary condition and um, there are some uh, more general conjectures uh, relaxing this uh, condition to be for example in the um benjaminish run sense um but uh definitely I, I think you need some conditions here uh, in order to um, get useful estimates um and and uh, um, this con the second condition is also reasonable and uh, the the third condition, uh, they actually mentioned a comment. Uh, uh, they ha had a comment on the when, when stating these uh, results, and uh, they said that they are more confident um, of conjecturing these uh, uh, limits for arithmetic ones instead of those non-arithmetic ones. And actually, this uh, comment uh, um, puzzled me a lot when I was trying to uh, thinking about this uh, conjecture, because. Um, uh, uh, if you look at some uh, L2 version of this, uh, um, uh, I mean, some, some of facts in the L2 torsion uh, of three main volts, and the condition of arithmeticity doesn't show up. And uh, so it, it is quite uh, intriguing why um, people um, would uh, put this condition here, and uh, um, we, we wanted to find some certain support uh, for uh, for uh, putting this, uh, uh, accepting this uh, uh, assumption. I guess that's one of the motivations that I, uh, I, I was considering whether this arithmeticity is one of the provided properties. And also, um, if, if, you look at, um, if you look at what uh, is written down on the left-hand side, this is uh, some information, the, the final cover and it's, uh, Portion in the first homology, that's something um, completely de determined by the profile completion of the group. So um, if you, um, uh, if this uh, conjecture, if there's uh, some chance that uh, this conjecture was true, um, then um, hopefully people should um, first be able to confirm that the volume uh, should also be a profile uh, property. So I guess, uh, uh, it is uh, one one of the motivations uh, for considering the profinite um, uh, properties um, is to um, like put some uh, evidence to this uh, conjecture. First, you want to try to show that uh, the volume and the arithmeticity are um, are profinite invariants. And I also mentioned some other. Uh, other ones, the uh, invariant trace field and the uh, invariant quaternion algebra, they, they do not um, directly show up in in the statement of this conjecture, but these are related to some other, uh, uh, a second aspect that I'll uh, explain below. Um, so this is, I guess, uh, um, some um, remote motivation uh, of the, um, uh, of why we are interested in um, profinite properties um, of, of those uh, geometric invariants. And I guess uh, another um, motivation um, is that um, uh, actually there are some other um, known um, examples of three manifolds which satisfy um, some um, more uh, strict um, Profinite rigidity. Um, the uh, some examples are like uh, 
uh, once punctured towards bundles over a circle. And uh, there are also examples of uh, um, uh, like the weak manifolds that is known to be uh, uh, absolutely profound and rigid. And that was a uh, uh, result of, uh, I guess, one of the um, strongest results um, uh, in, in this direction. That's a uh, uh, raid and the spitter. And what they show uh, is that the the, the, the fact that they show us that the uh, weak manifolds are profoundly rigid. The weak manifolds. The, the, uh, this is a closed hyperbolic um, manifold uh, of the smallest volume, orientable and closed of the smallest volume. And they show that this uh, manifold um, its fundamental group uh, is, is profoundly rigid. And actually it is absolutely profoundly rigid, which means it's uh, um, whenever you have another um, residually finite, finitely generated group um, that has a same fundamental group as this one, um, then, um, then um, these two groups are actually isomorphic to each other. Um, And technically, the way they prove uh, is that they actually looked at the um, um, the um, yeah, so to see um, a representation of variety and the characteristic uh, character variety. Yeah. I'm gonna still bit sloppy uh, about uh, PSO2C and the SO2C. Um, they are different things, but uh, um, you, you, you can, there, there are some um, um, ways to uh, like um, clearly stating the relation between those two. So uh, they are more or less uh, similar objects. And they actually, uh, so uh, in the work of uh, um, BMRS, they actually look as a, um, character variety and they showed that um, they, they proved this uh, profile rigidity um, by showing that if you have another group and you try to consider the uh, all the um, characters of representations into SL2C or PSL2C, uh, then they can actually find a, a, a correspondence between the um, be, between the characters or the irreducible characters. Uh, uh, of these two kinds of uh, um, character varieties. And so uh, in, in this way, and um, they can uh, sort of uh, find uh, using this uh, uh, bijective correspondence and uh, using some um, more, um, more special um, facts about the, uh, with, uh, the, the character variety of the Wix manifold, and then they can derive this uh, uh, results. So I guess uh, mm, one of the key features um, of uh, of their discussion is that they actually show that uh, for let's say this is M, then they actually show the um, character variety of uh, used the uh, special fact that this is so called. Um, Galois rigid. And uh, this is uh, um, uh, important, uh, uh, some, um, I mean, um, property that ma they makes use of uh, in uh, improving their results. Um, and this Galois thing, Galois rigid means that, you know, you have this uh, discrete faithful representation of pi one m and uh, basically any other uh, interesting um, representation or a character um, um, is a Galois conjugate uh, of that representation. So, um, so um, 
it might not be the exactly the same as uh, uh, the the given one, but uh, they just differ by a, a Galois transformation of the trace field, um, and then you can you, you can find this uh, isomorphism. Mm. And uh, I I think uh, one of the motivation um, for me to understanding this uh, um, profile invariance of uh, uh, Invariant trace field and invariant uh, um, quaternion algebra uh, as to um, try to understand uh, their argument and trying to figure out uh, what if you remove this uh, uh, condition of Galois rigidity and then whether or not you can uh, still find some uh, nice bijective correspondence between the uh, uh, PSO2C characters. Um, and uh, it turns out that in the, in, in the case of finite volume hyperbolic manifolds and among um, uh, among three manifold groups, this is uh, possible to do. So I'll I'll try uh, I'll try to first state on the main results and then I'll give some discussion of what they mean. Mm. So the first thing um, as as I mentioned on um, if you assume. Mm, the periodic regulator uh, injectivity conjecture or uh, profinite properties. Mm. And uh, I guess I need to um, say a little bit uh, about what this uh, conjecture says on um, when you say the listed properties do you mean the ones that were listed a few slides ago uh, yeah uh, the the like the vol the volume and the, the invariant trace field volume and uh, um, invariant trace field and the uh, and the uh, invariant quaternion algebra mm. and and the uh, arithmeticity And basically, what this conjecture says, it, it's like there is a, uh, if you remove this uh, um, periodic assumption, then that is a, a theorem of Borel, which is called the Borel regulator injectivity. And in the periodic version, as far as, as I know, this is um, still open. And uh, it, it looks like this. I'll briefly say it here. Um, so for any number of fields, uh, the most general version says that the um, the two m minus one k uh, for any m, um, and uh, uh, similar to the Borel uh, regulator in the um, uh, in the complex or uh, real case, there is a uh, um, it, you can define certain map of this type. Um, P is a prime, um, and you you can define a map that goes from the left, uh, something, some algebraic objects, uh, into uh, uh, into uh, the uh, sum of the uh, um, completion of K at all the um, places over this uh, given prime t, and this uh, the, the, it is conjectured that this is uh, uh, injective. What is that? What is the algebraic object on the left before the tensor product? Uh, in in the simplest case, like uh, when um, I think well. Um, in the ap actual application, you apply to the case where this is a case three, and you can um, for um, three manifold. You uh, and if k uh, arises as a invariant trace field, you can identify it um, as um, uh, as as something that can contain the um, contain the uh, third so 
So in, in the application, uh, essentially what you can say that when m equals three, and then you can find some, uh, some map from group homology um, of the um, m, which is just the third homology of m and uh, into here. And, and this way, uh, if you have certain, um, certain uh, injectivity of this type, then basically you can, you can actually um, use the, uh, you, you can actually um, use the uh, fundamental group uh, and evaluate it uh, in, uh, like, like you, can, you can sort of um, um, see the volume in the periodic version. Uh, and then you can use that information to identify the volume, and then then you can identify uh, the rest of the things by uh, the other uh, theorem I'm gonna state below. So uh, I guess uh, for this talk, because uh, mm, uh, when I was preparing this talk, I realized that the the, uh, mm, the number theoretic stuff seems to be too heavy to explain in this talk, and so I, I decided to. Uh, focus on the second, um, the, the second theorem, which which is a core part uh, of of the work I wanted to explain, and and that basically says that whenever uh, suppose um, suppose pi a and pi b are um, fundamental groups of uh, finite volume hyperbolic streaming foots. Mm. And then suppose you have a um, profinite isomorphism. Mm. Uh, then, um, sorry. Um, determines a, a bijective. Um, correspondence between on um, the uh, since you're working with uh, uh, algebraic setting you look at any algebraic closure of um, uh, of q and try to look at all the uh, representation fundamental group uh, into uh, in, into this pso2 um, the the algebraic closure on um, representations mm, such that they have certain uh, properties. And before I say that, and there is a blank actually on uh, the, those, for example, those are reducible representations would be on, um, I, I guess you can try to uh, also take care of those things by some extra uh, effort, um, but, uh, for those most interesting ones, we wanted to put uh, some condition called the, the risky um, dense, which basically means that the image, um, the the image uh, in the uh, in the group PSO two Q, if you look at its pullback um, to the SL two um, QAC, uh, then it's a uh, the risky uh, dense subset. Mm. Then this is some natural condition which. Um, which generalizes uh, this uh, uh, irreducibility. And uh, mm, so the first part uh, of this main result says that um, you have a correspondence uh, or a correspondence of the representations up to conjugacy. Um, and then the corresponding um, representations would have um, similar um, algebraic objects such that um, Corresponding representations uh, have uh, so uh, whenever you have a uh, um, whenever you have a representation of a group um, into um, PSO two C. PSO two C. Um, then, um, then you can talk about. Uh, I mean, for um, for PSL ones, um, uh, it makes sense 
um, to look at its adjoint uh, representation on, on the SL2C. And then you can talk about tracing that way. And then you can define the, the trace of um, uh, the, the trace field of pi. Or you can look at a canonical uh, finite index subgroup of pi and then look at the, uh, in the, the, the trace field of pi and under the, the risk dense assumption. And that actually give you the invariant trace fields. So, um, so in this way, um, the corresponding uh, representations, what you can um, say is that, first of all, they have identical um, invariant trace fields. And then, um, um, and, and then over these uh, um, invariant trace fields, um, uh, the, the representation, uh, you look at all the matrix, uh, you, you can, um, for, uh, for the moment, you can think of this to be a SL2C representation. Then you can look at um, um, each of the elements corresponding to a two by two matrix, and they generate a subalgebra uh, in, the, in the algebra of two by two matrices. That is, um, if you look at the invariant part, that's uh, um, that, that's called the invariant um, quaternion algebra. And for this correspondence, because you can conjugate on um, this uh, um, representation, the invariant uh, um, quaternion algebra is not um, directly um, identical to each other, but they're, uh, what you can show is that they are, um, they, they are isomorphic. Um, Quaternion algebras um, over the identified uh, invariant trace field. Uh, so, um, so uh, this is uh, um, the, the the correspondence. Um, and uh, um, actually, um, this this theorem was uh, uh, if you assume Galois rigidity, this theorem was proved um, by the work of. Uh, and Mike Reynolds and, uh, Reed and Spitler before. Um, and uh, um, the, the key point of this uh, uh, result is that you can remove this uh, Galois rigidity uh, assumption and still uh, you, can, you, you can set up a, a bijective correspondence between these two, um, uh, between the character varieties. And, and they have uh, identical um, or isomorphic um, associated algebraic uh, structures. Mm. And uh, a key point of this statement is, is that if you look at statement here, uh, it says that you have a bijective correspondence um, between, two, between these two uh, character varieties, but it doesn't tell you that um, if you start with the uh, discrete faithful representation of pi A on the left-hand side, it, it doesn't tell you whether it corresponds to the dis discrete faithful representation of pi b on the right hand side. So uh, that causes the uh, uh, the problem. I guess. Uh, um, so. Uh, um, yeah. So um, basically, if you assume this uh, um, th this periodic oral regulator injectivity conjecture, you can try to work with on some profinite um, homology and look at uh, where the uh, volume form or, or the fundamental class goes um, uh, and try to uh, try to detect them uh, in in the uh, in the profinite com completion of the uh, uh, of the invariant trace field and in that way you can uh, you you can derive the uh, you, you can actually say that the discrete faithful representations should actually correspond to each other. And then uh, with some um, extra effort, you can, you, you can try to show that these have the same volume and also uh, also similar to the uh, some argument before uh, in the um, Brisson, Mike Reynolds, the grade and the spitter, you can show that this is, uh, uh, um, it also preserves the arithmeticity because uh, Mm, because the discrete faithful ones should have the same 
uh, or isomorphic um, um, invariant trace uh, quaternion algebra, and in that way you can you, you can show that uh, arithmeticity is also preserved. Um, so I guess um, um, the the um, the point of this uh, um, theorem here is that uh, instead, uh, I mean, uh, removing this uh, uh, Galois rigidity, we should, uh, if we want to try to prove certain uh, correspondence uh, like this, then you actually need to uh, find some other ways to identify uh, different uh, representations. And that, uh, um, that is actually done um, um, by some, um, some more special features when, whenever you get uh, isomorphism, profound isomorphism for finite volume hyperbolic three manifolds. Um, that was uh, um, um, the, the techniques are closely related to, um, to uh, what I've proved before um, of this uh, profile almost rigidity. So I'll try to um, try to explain some key points uh, for setting up on um, this isomorphism, you, you can actually see um, why um, what was what is special about this assumption of finite volume hyperbolic three inputs and how they help um, you to set up a correspondence like this. Okay, so so I guess the key point here is that um I'll try to recall. Um, when M A and M B uh, are, um, I mean, you, you can actually uh, make more general assumptions, but for simplicity, uh, we'll try to um, um, look at a special kind of, uh, so not only M A and M B are on final volume ones, but uh, let's assume that, uh, start with, uh, Original assumption. This is a hyperbolic three input. And suppose you have a, a isomorphism between um, profile completion of A and uh, profile completion of B. So, um, one of the uh, results uh, I, I proved before is that. Um, between the um, first known balls. It actually preserves all the fibered faces. Um, so what you get is basically, um, I mean, at first when you have a, a isomorphism of this type, what you get is uh, first of all, something like this pi A. The hat uh, to H one of uh, pi b hat b hat, mm. uh, and it turns out that uh, this induced uh, using hyperbolic geometry mm, and the virtual specialization. What you can show is that this uh, isomorphism should take a very special type. It is uh, of the form psi star um, should be equal to on some mu times some phi. And the phi here, um, phi here is, uh, uh, this is a uh, abelian group isomorphism. And this mu is something um, in, uh, in the uh, profile completion of the end of it. It is a, a invertible element. So in this way, at least you have an, uh, a, a meaningful uh, isomorphism um, between the homology and it turns out this isomorphism must preserve, uh, must preserve the first norm structure. Uh, and that will give you isomorphism between the first norm ball. And also, uh, also I mean, it, the, the two of it should preserve the first norm ball and also preserve all the fiber faces. Um, and the, what you can extract from um, this identification um, is that uh, you can actually show also, um, uh, you, you can conclude that um, if MA hmm, 
as fibered in a special way, um, then um, correspondingly, um, and the special feature is that um, this correspondence actually sets up a correspondence between the um, be between the periodic trajectories uh, of the um, uh, uh, of the pseudo uh, pseudo of suspension flow. Um, the, does the does the um, identification of Thurston norm bubbles send fiber faces to fiber faces? Uh, yeah, this. Uh, on um, this certain number identification um, preserve fiber phase to fiber phases. So at, in, in particular, um, for any fibered class of pi A, you can find the corresponding fibered class of pi B. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, well, um, for these two, uh, their corresponding uh, suspension flow have some nice um, correspondence. So what you can do, uh, to be made to make precise then on um, let's see a uh, fiber phase of phi a corresponding corresponded to a fiber phase of pi b and uh, whenever you have c a uh, a periodic trajectory of the pseudo onos of suspension flow and that's actually something you can detect from the Nielsen um, fixed points uh, index uh, theory, and that, that turns out to be some uh, some um, feature that you can read off from uh, the the fundamental group and how it fibers. And then it, you can show that uh, you can show that the the uh, exact relation is that. Um, the homology class of the periodic um, class under this uh, uh, by then, then you can show it should be equal to not necessarily a phi b, but it, it's phi b to some power that is exactly this uh, power mu here. So roughly speaking, you can actually from, I mean, if you believe this correspondence, uh, it tells you that Many elements or, or many conjugacy classes um, in so many conjugacy classes of pi a. Um, there are many trajectory uh, classes, and once you set up this uh, uh, correspondence, it helps you to. Um, um, to, to detect, whenever you have a representation, you can try to find the trace of that representation uh, over this uh, set of corresponding elements. The only problem is that uh, here, this uh, mu here is uh, something at the very beginning, we said it lies in, um, lies in this thing. Um, so it, uh, uh, it does this this identity does not directly tell you whether you have an identity between the trees, but actually what you can um, furthermore show um, is that uh, in the pseudo also of setting, you can uh, in particular say that uh, um, mu square must be equal to one um, in d hat. And what it says is that um, for any p, you can actually show that um, the p component of mu square, um, this must be plus or minus one on um, dp. So if you look at the periodic uh, completion of those uh, uh, representations, you're looking at the trace uh, of certain two by two matrix, and then you, you will have this, uh, um, uh, in, in periodic setting, you will have an identity of this type. This is a two by two SL matrix, and that will correspond to, um, um, let's say, B to plus or minus one and uh, row. Something like this. Um, and then um, because of this uh, special feature, um, that's um, I actually figured out in the 
in more recent work. And then you can show that uh, over periodic this is differed by uh, at most uh, inverse and that does not affect the trace. And so roughly speaking, you can use this information to identify the trace of corresponding elements. And there are many of them. They actually generate uh, this fundamental group and they use uh, those information you can actually prove. Mm, uh, there are some more um, technical stuff to, uh, that you need to figure out, um, but that is essentially the new input. Uh, if you remove this uh, Galois uh, rigidity and make use of those uh, um, pseudo analysis of suspension flow and their periodic trajectories, then you can prove a theorem of this type. And as I explained, um, um, you, you wanted to identify the discrete faithful representations of these, uh, of these two groups. And that's something I wasn't able to do right now. Um, and, but, but I figured out that if you try to um, make, uh, make, make use of a certain, uh, assume certain um, periodic version uh, of the uh, reg borrow regulated learn regulator injectivity conjecture, then then you can get some way to um, to get the invariance of a volume and then all the other things will uh, naturally follow. Um, and I guess uh, I'm out of time. So I only explain those uh, uh, key points and I'll just stop here. Uh, it should be able to hear you. It might work to project or like yeah. uh, Hey, this is Nathan. Um, so this stuff about the Borel regulator conjecture is that um, like connected to the block group, um, uh, mm. like K three. So like like stuff that Walter Neumann. I mean, you get these classes. Like, there's some conjecture about whether these are generated block groups are generated by arithmetic lattices or something. Is it related to that or not really? Mm, I, I think for this specific one, uh, it's not directly related to that. I think there are some other uh, other uh, parallel conjectures in terms of block group. And uh, when, when I did the literature search, uh, I, I think those are some, um, I, I mean, there are some. Um, um, some uncertain um, isomorphisms. So I, I wasn't able to directly identify those uh, um, periodic version of block groups to uh, what I stated here, but I figured that this, is, this is a possible way to, um, to get the in invariance of a volume. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is it easier to to uh, show that volume is a profinite property among arithmetic uh, hyperbolic three manifold groups? Mm. Mm. Does it allow you to, to um, use less piadic stuff or? Um, let me see. If you assume both of things are arithmetic, um, yeah, I think there's still some uh, some difficulty. I, I can try to uh, sketch what what essentially obstructs. The, and so so roughly speaking, when you have an um, periodic um, isomorphism, what you have is uh, uh, isomorphism of this type. Mm. Yeah, this this is something um so, something natural, but. Uh, uh, one um, one thing that is uh, unclear is that um, w when you have a let's see, uh, yeah, you, you know because uh, because psi here, um, if you look at what happens on the first homology, it uh, sets up a um, correspondence of uh, of this type uh, on dimension one psi one looks like new and the phi so. So um, I would expect this would send something like uh, M A. You, you can still write uh, write down this uh, class here, and it, it it seems that this this should go to something like this mu cube or something. Uh, 
so so there's not actually um uh, the general assumption here doesn't actually tell you a correspondence between these uh, uh, fundamental classes and another problem is that um you don't have a um, nice object here um for setting up uh ideally you wanted something here um, to be some may, maybe some periodic field or something so that you can write on at least some volume form uh, inside here uh, and and then you you have an identification which sends the volume form on the left to the volume form on the right and that's also something you can uh, it's hard to do on the uh, on the cohomology level of the provide the completion group itself. And what you can do, try to use a representation to send them uh, into, uh, into the uh, third homology of the uh, of SL to maybe some um, periodic field. And, and then, then there you lose something um, because uh, mental groups are not necessarily have this uh, congruent subgroup property, um, but... Uh, yeah, I, I think essentially, if you want to identify the volume, you you need to set up uh, some correspondence like this here. And if you assume both pi a and pi b are arithmetic, still um, there, um, yeah, it, it does not does not directly tell you they should correspond to each other. I guess that's a key point. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So under this correspondence of um, uh, Zariski dense representations, uh, if your manifolds are say one cusp or something, um, mm. is there any hope of even assuming a periodic Borel regulator uh, that you get a correspondence between Dane fillings of them too? Um, yeah, I think the correspondence between the Dane fillings should should directly follow from the work of uh, Wilton and Zaleski because. Uh, they they show that the cusp subgroups should correspond to each other and uh, and uh, by passing to finite powers you can actually see the cusp subgroup in the first homology, um, so um, so it, it you can derive this uh, correspondence between the uh, slopes on the boundaries and then uh, then the then feelings should uh, um, should you can identify this um, corresponding then feelings. And that that does not actually use the representation variety stuff. Um, this is maybe slightly related to the last question. In your in your second theorem, uh, would you be able to say like how much would it take to promote the correspondence between these portions of the character variety to a full uh, isomorphism of uh, character varieties? Um, to, to the representation variety. Right. So in, in your second theorem, you have a correspondence between uh, you know, certain Zariski dense portions of uh, the character varieties of these manifolds. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe it's too naive, uh, but I'm hoping to just get an isomorphism of the varieties. Um, I would expect that the other, the, the, the rest parts um, um, should more naturally correspond to each other. Um, but it, it does require some uh, separate work to setting up the correspondence. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dave, I think it's the representations that are very dense. But you're just not doing the reducing. Okay. No, but it's also the ones that are over there, end up in the algebraic closure rate. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I mean, the, the abelian representations naturally correspond to each other because uh, they factor through the um, hom first homology. And then um, the only um, left ones are those uh, like upper triangular representations. You want to make some e extra work to try to identify them. And they, are, they, they do naturally, they, they do not actually show up in the character variety. They, they, um, yeah, you, you need to um, work harder for um, um, saying things about those representations. Other questions? All right, let's uh, thank uh, Yi again.